Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to today's video where we're going to focus on the topic of crime, predominantly in the UK and the USA. And you may say, Neil, last time you said you weren't going to talk about crime anymore because the videos keep getting censored and you got a strike for showing those graphs the, the last time you did this. And yeah, that is true, but we are going to still do it today because the news that is coming out is absolutely shocking and we're finally starting to see public outrage around these statistics. We're seeing a lot of media on this as well now, which shows you that we're starting to see this flip in the public sentiment around what is happening with crime, uh, violent offences against retail workers, as retail workers are losing their jobs at a mass scale. Now, if you haven't got time to watch the whole video, I want to just talk about one small point that we're going to come to later on, and that is that what we are actually seeing here with a lot of these incidents and why the police aren't responding to a lot of this is coming down to a number of things. I'll go through all the evidence because we've got loads of articles to go over. I want to show you what's being said, what's not being said. Let's look at all the statistics. But one of the articles later on in the video is really telling of the reason why a lot of things are not being done about this. And it's around this new AI surveillance system. And it makes me wonder, is there something more nefarious going on here? Is that why crime is up 300% in one single year? And of course, it depends on the crime itself as to which one is up. But ever since 2019, crime statistics are up massively. And the government really isn't doing a lot about this. And as I've said a number of times before, if you are weak on crime and you're weak on criminals, then crime increases. You have criminal gangs that move into areas and they just run amok because they know that there really aren't that many consequences for these crimes. So this is what we're seeing. And now let's go over to the shared screen anyway, because I want to show you a lot of the things that are going on, because it is a really, really serious thing now that is, is going on. So let's get started. Now, you may remember last year when I talked about the rise of security tags on everything from cheese to meat to even butter and now chocolate bars and all sorts of other things. This is also causing a large problem. But I noticed on this search, as I was going through the images, it said related searches, how to remove all types of security tags. I mean, for the amount of people that must be typing this into Google for it to come up as a related search tells me that there is something very seriously wrong here. And I mean, even spam, look at this, spam locked away in security boxes. This is crazy. So BRC then reported on this last summer, and it said that retail theft was up 27% across 10 of the largest UK cities. And yes, we are going to come across to the US as well. We've got a lot of articles on the US here. But I just want to focus firstly on the UK, which is where we're seeing absolutely staggering numbers. And then we'll jump over to the US um, once we've covered the UK, violence and abuse against UK retail staff rises to 1,300 incidents a day. Now, you've got to bear in mind, the UK is a very small country. So for 1,300 incidents a day, that is staggering. Because remember that a lot of retailers now are using self-service. So their staff numbers are down anyway. British Retail Consortium says criminals being given a free pass. Absolutely correct with thefts more than doubling to 16.7 million incidents last year. And when you think about how many millions of people live in the UK, it tells you that these are repeat offenders. It is criminal gangs. It is people as well that are suffering due to inflation, the cost of living crisis. That is absolutely correct. But that's another point that we definitely need to address. Who caused the cost of living crisis? It was the government, it was the central bank, just like we talked about how they've caused a lot of these problems with work. We talked about this on yesterday's video. In fact, two days ago, it was uh, the video two days ago. Yesterday was on the mechanization of 
Germany now becoming a militarized economy. That's the way they're moving it towards. Both really good videos you should catch up on. But yeah, it is the same problem. The government, the central bank, has caused all this inflation. They've caused the cost of living crisis with the energy. We've talked about that a lot. With the food prices more than doubling. In fact, some food prices are up 200, 300 percent. And yet they try and make out like we're idiots and we and they say, oh, no, it's only up 20 percent. Yeah, OK. And then they have the cheek, these politicians to say that, well, wages have gone up. And that's the reason that food prices have gone up, because people are being greedy. You know, they're so out of touch with the average person that they can't even see or they're ignorant to the fact that they have caused these problems in the first place. Retailers saw the number of incidents of racial abuse, sexual harassment, physical assault and threats with weapons rise 50% last year, while thefts more than doubled to 16.7 million incidents, according to the British Retail Consortium, the trade body which represents most major retailers. Rampant price inflation with the cost of everyday goods from eggs to baby formula increasing over the past two years at a rate not seen since records began in the 1970s, leaving many families struggling to make ends meet. What's also interesting is where else have we seen eggs and baby formula? We've seen it in Europe. We've seen it in the USA. We've seen it in a lot of Western countries. It tells you there's something not quite right there. While retailers are blaming a rise in organized crime and scarce police resources, yeah, we covered this as well on that statistics-based um, crime video. And the reason is a lot of these police resources are going towards hate crimes, even though a lot of it is not even hate crimes. While real crimes, like violence against people, are not being investigated. And I know that's a strong claim for me to make, but I'll prove this to you as we go through the video because the data shows us. Remember, we always need to look at data and statistics and numbers and percentages. Forget about what the media says. Forget about, we talked about this during the COVID lockdown period, that it's not about the, the statistics. It's about how people feel about those statistics. Nonsense. It's about the statistics. Always remember that because they will try to manipulate you and tell you it's about feelings and offending people and how other people feel about this. You can't talk about crime statistics. You may offend certain people. No, you can. Forget about people's feelings about these crime statistics. Forget about the criminal gangs and everything else and their feelings. No, let's look at the numbers. Let's look at the statistics. And that tells us what is actually going on. Let's create real solutions for these real world problems. And let's not beat around the bush. This is the problem we've got in society now. People are too scared of offending other people, especially with this new hate crime bill and freedom of speech bill that's only going to make this worse. And we're going to see more examples coming through the media of so-and-so said this and it offended this person. And now they're going to be charged with a hate crime. It's all craziness. And this is why People are leaving the UK and the US and Canada and other countries with record numbers now because it's going so crazy. The politicians are destroying our countries. Despite retailers investing huge sums in crime prevention, violence and abuse against retail workers is climbing. Criminals are being given a free pass to steal goods and to abuse and assault retail colleagues. No one should have to go to work fearing for their safety. Absolutely. Now you look at the, again, the stats here. These are daily incidents of violence and abuse against staff. Look when all of this started, 2020. It was still double that in 2021. But you look now and it is staggering absolutely staggering this statistic because it's now three times higher than before the pandemic. The latest figures come after almost 90 retail leaders, including the bosses of uh, Tesco, Sainsbury's Boots and WH Smith, wrote to the government in October, we made a video on this, demanding action on rising retail crime. As they said, violent criminals were emptying stores. And it's true. That's why a lot of people are going online as well. The next article talks about shoplifting rate in England and Wales, the highest in more than 20 years. For the first time ever, the number has exceeded 400,000. And look how much this cost. It cost businesses 
billion pounds this year. This is why another reason a lot of small businesses are collapsing. Because what can they do when there's theft and they can't even apprehend the criminals? You try, just try this, you try apprehending someone who is committing a crime or shoplifting like that and you're a small business owner. Because remember, your typical small business owner isn't some big muscle-bound guy that goes to the gym who's an expert in martial arts and knows how to restrain people. That is not the, the reality. A lot of business owners as well are women. And what are you going to do if you have some big muscle-bound guy or you have these crime gangs where three or four or five of them come in all at the same time and try and start stealing stuff from your store? What are you going to do even if you are a muscle-bound guy? Are you going to take on four or five guys? Even if you did have that capability, the chances are you're going to be arrested for assault for trying to restrain someone, they can actually call the police on you and you can be charged for assault. This is the insanity now of how our economies are going. It's madness. Now look at this statistic. Retailers say many cases are going unpunished, with co-op food revealing in September that police attended about 2 in 10 of the incidents its workers reported. That is 20%. That is it. Only 20% were responded to by police. But in the same month, the Justice Secretary, Alex Chalk, set out measures for criminals facing jail sentences of under 12 months to receive suspended sentences and community service. Now, I'll tell you why this is a big betrayal. So this is what is supposed to happen. What is the maximum sentence for theft? Maximum sentence, of course, are emphasis on this word, if the goods are worth less than £200, the maximum sentence is six months custody. If goods are worth more than £200, the maximum sentence is seven years custody. Of course, this never happens. And this is why we're seeing this crazy stuff like under 12 months receive suspended sentences or community service. Weak on crime and crime goes rampant. Even the BBC, which, you know, tells you something, is making articles on this at the moment. And they're talking about these uh, soaring incidents, criticizing the government for woefully inadequate measures. And they talk about that even, it's obvious these are criminal gangs. They're stealing this stuff so that they can sell the items on. This is not people suffering from the inflation. In one of the most extreme cases of violence in the services sector that the BBC heard, One customer assistant said she was punched in the face and her jaw was broken in an apparently random attack. The BBC loved this statement. It was just a random attack by young customers. The lady said, I hid the fact I had an injury until they left. I couldn't risk them thinking I was injured because they might hit me again. Yeah, these are cowardly gangs now. These teenage gangs that are getting together to attack people. This lady's now got a plate in her jaw. 40% of violent shoplifting the police are not going out to. So we know they're only attending 20% of the normal shoplifting crimes. But even more shocking is they're only attending 40% of the violent crimes. Yet you misgender someone or you do something crazy like this. I've heard all these stories recently of um, hate crimes and you, you look at it and you read the reports and you go, hold on, wait, that's a, that's a hate crime. Misgendering someone by accident. Okay, I guess it's a little bit different if you do it deliberately, but even then, is that is that a hate crime now? I mean, goodness me, where, where are we going with all this? So what do they think the solution is? Recruiting new security guards. Oh yes, yes, they want to rec- recruit all of these. They need 9,000 more colleagues. <laughs> like, uh, they're calling them colleagues across the UK and that's going to solve the problem. No, it's not because you even try and arrest someone the chances are you're going to go to to jail. And the co-op's recruiting undercover guards. Yeah, good luck with that co-op. It's not going to work. Um, So this is really what's happening. They're rolling out AI tech and secure till kiosks. They think this is going to solve the problem. It's not. You're just accelerating this AI trend. And when I was reading through a lot of the attacks, I mean, this stuff's shocking. Knives, screwdrivers, hammers, hypodermic needles. This is what staff are being threatened with. It is crazy. And the new government plan is absolutely laughable. They are saying Project 
Pegasus. Now, this is very, very controversial. It's a facial recognition and digital intelligence gathering platform. And this isn't just the UK. They're doing this in a lot of Western countries, which leads me to believe that maybe, and again, I know this might be a little bit crazy and far out there, but just maybe there's something behind this. Maybe the reason that the police are not going out to investigate all of this, and maybe the police don't even know this themselves, because this comes from a higher level, is because the government wants all of this Project Pegasus, where they're using all this AI and tracking measures to, tr to track and monitor everybody. Because think of it this way, and again, I know this is getting a little bit crazy here, but think of it this way. If you say to the average citizen, hey, we're going to start tracking you and putting AI everywhere, and you're going to be tracked everywhere you go, people are going to say, no, no, I'm, I'm not doing that, no way. But if you bring out all this media and say, hey, look at all this violence and danger and look at all your shops closing and everything else, P again, tipping point theory, people are going to say, OK, so what's the solution? Well, it's this Project Pegasus. We need to track all of these thieves and do AI and criminals and everything else. You're going to say, oh, OK, sure. Yeah, if it's going to solve the problem, not realizing that actually this is going to be on you as well. Now let's jump across to the US and talk about all the US stuff because this isn't just UK, this is happening over there as well. And they focus a lot of, if you look at a lot of the media, they're focusing a lot of this on the migration crisis, which I personally, I've got to be honest, don't think that all, the, you know, all this crime is just from migrants. So what are they doing here? Walmart moved to build a police station inside a store in Atlanta. Yeah, this is legit. This is absolutely serious. CVS putting items in locked cases, hiring security guards to watch over shoppers' behavior. I mean, this is ridiculous. Walgreens have closed stores, citing organized retail crimes. And this is the way you know there's something dodgy going on here. Most law enforcement does not track retail theft specifically. Hmm, I wonder why they don't track retail theft. Target saw its stores seeing a 120% increase in theft involving violence or threats of violence in the first five months of 2023. Axonify said 70% of their staff had witnessed an increase in theft within the last year. And here's another one. It's hard to get a handle on the extent of crime because a lot of the information is qualitative and many of the statistics used are partial or unreliable. This makes understanding the problem challenging. Yeah, it's obvious what they're doing here. And look, all of these stores are closing. Target closed nine of its stores due to crime. And you remember this article from a month ago. This Starbucks employee or ex-Starbucks employee stopped a robbery. Yes, this was an armed robbery. He stopped it and Starbucks fired him. This is absolutely legit. They fired him because they said that he broke company protocol, not to mention the fact that the guy was pistol whipped by the robbers. And that was the response. So this was the guy here. He stopped the robbery after being pistol whipped, by the way. So that says something else about this guy's resilience because most people would not have done that. And then Starbucks fires him. So fair play to him. He is suing them and uh, he's, he's uh, going with the grounds of his human right to self-defense. And I say fair play to him. I hope he wins his case. Now, remember that Starbucks is closing so many branches now because what they call safety concerns. No, it's crime. <laughs> they are closing all of their locations due to crime. And it's interesting to me, I was looking at all the closures, that they are all in California or they're in Portland, they're in New York City, etc. These are the cities that have the most crazy laws around crime. If you are weak on crime and criminals, you're going to have more crime. This is just common sense. And it doesn't help when you listen to things like this from these employees. We don't get to see nearly any of the profits that we create for this company. We clearly don't make enough money for what we do here. Everyone knows that Starbucks is expensive coffee. You got to assume that they're making some pretty high margins of profit. Where that should go is not in their investors' pockets. It should go in the people who are working for their company. <laughs> okay, did you, did you hear that just then? So they're saying that the profits that a company makes shouldn't go to the company, it should go to the employees. 
what's the point in owning the company then? So you're up to date really on this situation. You know what's going on here. You're weak on crime, you're weak on criminals, you let them run amok, and this is what you end up with. And isn't it funny that at the extreme end of crime in other countries, you just don't see it because the police are so hard on crime that, oh, what a surprise, people don't commit crime. But yet you're weak on crime where criminals know they can get away with it and all of a sudden you have high rates of crime. I just, I can't see the pattern or the correlation here between these two, these two things. If you can, drop it in the comments below. It's, you know, it's a mystery to me. So again, our countries are going to absolute crap because the government has become so soft on crime and they're just running with all of this weird crazy policies that are coming down from all of these three-letter organizations and everything else. It's just madness what's going on now. It really is. And it's no wonder that people are fleeing from these countries and just going elsewhere. And um, I think this is going to continue this pattern. Thanks so much for watching today. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you on the next video.